What is going on, everybody? It's the Frost, and we are here for a backlash preview and prediction show. We this one is probably one of the weirdest times to have a pay per view. We just got done with the Greatest Royal Rumble last week. This show really didn't get built much outside of Roman versus Roman versus Joe and the two women's championship matches, which both are useless and pointless. And I won't go much over those as it is, but. This show just feels like it's it should have happened already. The Superstar Shaker, of course, still hasn't been completely complete yet because we do have two SmackDown versus Matt Raw matches tonight on um, this Sunday. One, of course, for the Intercontinental Title, which makes that match really overly predictable. Unless they say if Miz wins, he goes back to Raw like they did last year with Chris Jericho when he went up against Kevin Owens at I think it was Payback. I think it was Payback. And if Jericho won the United States Championship, he goes to SmackDown, in which, of course, he won. He was on SmackDown the next Tuesday until, of course, he got voted off for six, I mean, three or four months, five months, and then he came back and wrestled one more match. But anyway, this show, there's, there's, there's a bunch of matches that just seemed like they were thrown together last minute, starting off with Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn on SmackDown were a, were the focal point for like the main one of the big main storylines for majority of the year so far. You had them up against Shane McMahon, both of them trying to win the WWE Championship match. They faced the AJ Styles at the, at the Royal Rumble in a handicap match. They faced AJ Styles and three other. They had a six pack challenge at Wrestle at at Fastlane. Against AJ Styles, Baron Corbin, Dolph Ziggler, John Cena, and them two, which made it a six-match challenge. And then, of course, they faced off against Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon after getting fired for, you know, beating the hell out of their boss. Then, of course, they go to Monday Night Raw, and they become just another two guys on the show. You go from headline and being a big major storyline going into WrestleMania to jobbing the Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley. Who's going to win this match? Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman, unless, and I will say this, unless they are setting Bobby Lashley up to turn heel, because quite honestly, there is an imbalance in, on Monday Night Raw for heels, out like the, the way they're portraying guys. Bobby Lashley's a babyface, Braun Strowman's a babyface, Roman, even though nobody likes him, is still portrayed, is still WWE's babyface. Seth Rollins and Balor are all baby faces. We need somebody on this show for Monday Night Raw to turn heel. So if Bobby Lashley turns heel and the Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Bobby Lashley beat down Braun Strowman, it would it would keep Braun Strowman um, strong because it took three guys to beat him instead of just you know some fluke, some fluke victory for uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. So Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman again. We just saw and we just saw this match two weeks ago. On Monday Night Raw, what happened? Braun Strowman ran over Kevin Owens and destroyed Sami Zayn. Ran over Kevin Owens, destroyed Sami Zayn. Ran over Kevin Owens, turned in, in a running power slam to Sami Zayn for the victory. So why do I want to see this match again? We just saw it last week, and then this past Monday, them and Roman went up against Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Jinder Mahal. So again, why are we getting this match? So. Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley over Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, unless Bobby Lashley turns heel to help the heels win by beating down Braun Strowman. Daniel Bryan versus Big Cass in a singles match. This match, of course, comes out of the Superstar Shakeup. Daniel Bryan, of course, made his return at WrestleMania, winning a match against with Shane McMahon against the two we just talked about, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. The night of the Tuesday, the SmackDown portion of the Superstar Shakeup, he was met in the back by Big Cass. And then Big Cass, at the end of the night, ended up hitting, like, pretty much saying, instead of knee to face, it was boot to face. It was boot to face, and he just laid him out. Then the next week, Daniel Bryan made it official by talking to Shane McMahon or Page, whichever one, that it'll be him and Big Cass at Backlash. And then, of course, this past Tuesday, they just sunk as low as can be and gave us mini Daniel Bryan. So, I don't care for this match. I hope Daniel Bryan wins this thing. Daniel Bryan is the bigger is the big money maker for WWE compared to Big Cass. Big Cass has nothing. Big Cass is just a guy who is seven foot tall with no charisma. No, he he was he was being overshadowed by a guy who had no talent in the ring. It was just a catchphrase. Do you really think I want to take this guy seriously? No. 
Putting him against Jan Daniel Bryan is going to help him get heel heat, and then you pull what you did on Tuesday and have him bring out a mini-me of Daniel Bryan, fucking do the whole small puns, small jokes, and then, of course, what do you do? You have Big Cass not beat him up and try and get some heel heat, which, in the end, isn't going to help him in the end. So, Daniel Bryan should win this one. If they do have Big Cass win this match, I don't know where they go from here. Roman Reigns versus Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe, of course, is in the news recently because of what happened on Tuesday. Samoa Joe comes out the night after WrestleMania to interrupt Roman Reigns and says he is a failure. He keeps calling him a failure week after week after week, which I am fucking enjoy. And says he, after Brock Lesnar is done with you at the Creators Royal Rumble, I will be, be waiting for you at Backlash. Of course, Samoa Joe's only had one match, really, since he's come back from injury, and that was a squash match against Sin Cara on the Tuesday portion of the Superstar Shake-Up a couple weeks ago. Of course, there's a lot of speculation and rumor that, that Samoa Joe is going to lose this match and then go on to feud with AJ Styles. I'll talk about that tomorrow on Unscripted. Why in the hell would you have Samoa Joe lose this match? You're already building Roman Reigns up in the piss-poor way. Why, what's a loss going to do for him here? Absolutely nothing. Samoa Joe needs to win this match. Samoa Joe needs to win this match to even be considered a threat for the WWE Championship because it's like he comes out there and he's giving out a threat. It pretty much, as it says in the video package for this match, Corey Graves is like, I've never heard Samoa Joe give an idle threat before. So having him go out there and lose to Roman Reigns would be like, yeah, he was just that was just an idle threat, and he, he, he couldn't back up his words. Now, on the other hand, for Roman Reigns, and people are probably going to want to hate to hear this, but Roman Reigns is treading into Bray Wyatt territory before the Woken gimmick. Well, I mean, the Woken, the, the leader of worlds. He is running into Bray Wyatt territory, as in, he comes out, he makes all these damn promises that he's going to do this, he's going to do that, and then he doesn't back it up in the ring. He said he was going to go to WrestleMania and win the Universal Championship. Didn't do it. He went to Saudi Arabia and said he was walking out as Universal Champion. He didn't do it. So if he comes out at Backlash and ends up losing again, it's like, is Vince McMahon, what is Vince McMahon trying to do? Bray Wyatt, for the majority of his career, comes out, but spouts off a bunch of bullshit saying he's going to make his opponent suffer and yada 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 and shit that doesn't make any sense. And then what happens? He goes to the pay-per-view and he loses. So if you think about it, Roman Reigns, the guy who's supposed to be the man in the company, is starting to look a lot like Bray Wyatt before Matt Hardy rescued his career, and these two are now the Raw Tag Team Champions. Which, by the way, there are no Tag Team title matches on this card, which is fine, we don't need to see them every week, every time, but of course, as we know, with the brand splits, the brand split pretty much meaning absolutely nothing outside of the shows, and the pay-per-views are all dual-branded, because remember, this is the first ever dual-branded pay-per-view. That's not, WrestleMania wasn't dual branded, the Greatest Royal Rumble wasn't dual branded, Royal Rumble wasn't dual branded, but this is the first ever dual branded pay-per-view. What were all the pay-per-views before 2016, where we didn't really have brands, even though you had people who showed up on SmackDown more than Raw and vice versa. So, I don't understand what anyone thinks of this, what, about that, but Roman Reigns should lose to Samoa Joe here, and I don't know what they're going to do with Roman Reigns. Him, him beating Samoa Joe does more harm in the long run. Samoa Joe should be going up against AJ Styles or Shinsuke Nakamura because he can work babyface and heel if they need him to because Joe is a legit guy and I would love to see Samoa Joe versus Shinsuke Nakamura again or, of course, anybody who remembers their feuds in Impact TNA Impact Wrestling, Samoa Joe versus AJ Styles would be one hell of a feud. So Samoa Joe over Roman Reigns because Roman doesn't need it and Samoa Joe does. Carmella vs. Charlotte Flair, single match for the WWE Championship. Of course, everyone knows Carmella cashed in one Money in the Bank last year at the Money... Well, she won it with the help of James Ellsworth at the Money in the Bank a pay-per-view last year. But WWE doesn't want you to know that. WWE wants to erase that from history. They want you to know that the match at SmackDown two weeks later was the official win for Carmella because she won it by herself because Becky Lynch stopped James Ellsworth from helping her again, I'm pretty sure. But she won it. Uh, at, money, at Money in the Bank, and then again two weeks later, and then she held it until the night, two nights after WrestleMania, pretty much making Oscar's streak look like shit, and that WWE didn't care about it. 
Carmella, of course, with the help of the iconic, the the eye iconics, because WWE doesn't realize iconics has one eye. Oh, he has two eyes in it. So why the fuck are you putting two at the beginning of the word? Anyway, they beat down. They made their debut in two nights after WrestleMania. They beat down Charlotte Flair, and then Carmella came in, cashed in, and won the title. And has been a shitty champion since. She sucks on promos. She sucks in the ring. She is just god fucking awful. She is transitional champion to a T. Charlotte Flair in a short, short match. I do not want to see any anything of the Iconics, Oscar, or Becky Lynch getting involved. Charlotte Flair should win the title back. Carmella invokes a rematch clause on Tuesday. Gets beat again, and she goes off into obscurity where she belongs. And get Carmella out of that fucking singlet. That does not make her hot. It does not make her look sexy. It makes her look like a fucking child. And it's fucking disgusting. Nia Jax was Alexa Bliss singles match for the Raw Women's Championship. Nia Jax should win this one. Of course, leading up in the rest from, up to WrestleMania, Nia Jax was supposed to be Alexa Bliss's best friend. Alexa Bliss then, of course, was a newly turned Mickey James because two months beforehand, Mickey James was a babyface going up against Alexa Bliss, but they decided, let's just turn the heel without any explanation. But anyway, Nia Jax wins the title at WrestleMania, and of course, since then, Mickey, uh, Alexa Bliss has been doing a moment with Bliss, fat, um, subtly making fat jokes and fat shaming Nia Jax still, calling Nia Jax a bully, and uh, she will persevere at, 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 at Backlash and win her Raw Women's Championship match, I mean Championship back. There are eight matches on this show, and this show is supposed to run for three hours only. Nia Jax should beat, should beat Alexa Bliss in a squash. The squash that should have happened at WrestleMania, that match went way too long. This match should last no more than two to three minutes with a squash by Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss goes off to cower in fear from Ronda Rousey. Jeff Hardy vs. Randy Orton, singles match for the United States Championship. This match originally was supposed to be Jinder Mahal vs. Randy Orton. Thank fucking God somebody in WWE management got their heads, their a- heads out of their asses or head out of Vince McMahon's ass and was like, listen, that, those matches of last year sucked. What can we do? Let's put the title on Jeff Hardy. Let's move him to SmackDown, which I saw coming anyway, and we can have a match that we haven't seen in over 10 years. The last time these, actually, these two actually had a singles feud was when Randy Orton was the WWE champion and Jeff Hardy was, feud- was trying to win the title from Randy Orton. And we got that RKO out of nowhere in the match, I believe it was at the Royal Rumble in 2008, where Hardy goes for the twist of fate and Randy Orton reverses it into an RKO. It's actually on their top 10 RKO out of nowhere. So, yeah, Randy Orton versus Jeff Hardy. I'm looking forward to this one. This should actually be a pretty damn good match. I'm hoping Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton can put on a hell of a show. This is Randy Orton. When Randy Orton is in the ring with somebody he likes to work with, and I believe Jeff is one of those guys, he can put on a hell of a match. You could tell last year when he was facing Jinder Mahal, he was phoning it in. He didn't give a fuck. He just wanted to get through the match. He didn't give a two shits worth anything. So, Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton. This one is a toss-up. It really is. This one is a toss-up. Simply because it's like Jeff Hardy. This is Jeff Hardy's first United States Championship run. Of course, Randy Orton won his first U.S. Championship at Fastlane, I believe it was. And then, of course, lost it to Jinder Mahal at WrestleMania. And if they want, I don't think Randy Orton really needs the United States Championship. Jeff Hardy is more filled for that role right now because the WWE Championship picture is kind of filled with Nakamura, Styles, Joe, and Randy could go up there too. And I would like to see Randy Orton versus Jeff Hardy versus AJ Styles at a later date if Jeff, if AJ Styles wins the title, retains the title at Backlash. So. I'm going to take Jeff Hardy on this one. This one, out of everything I've talked about so far, is the harder one to call because it could go either way. These two have put on better, good matches in, and had a good few before, but I would like to see Randy Orton try and get his heel back a little bit, especially if AJ Styles does retain the championship and AJ Styles goes until... Quite honestly, if AJ Styles does not beat Shinsuke Nakamura, if Shinsuke Nakamura does not beat AJ Styles this Sunday, AJ Styles will keep the title until SummerSlam or Survivor Series. Or somewhere around that time. Have it for a year. So I'm going Jeff Hardy because Randy Orton, I think, could be better off in the could be better off in the main card for now. Jeff Hardy, by the end of the year, I could see going up there. But I would like to see Jeff Hardy versus Shelton Benjamin for the title. Jeff Hardy versus Rusev Day. Jeff Hardy versus 
Aiden English as well because Rusev said Aiden English breaks up. Jeff Hardy versus huh. Jeff Hardy versus one of the New Day members. I would love to see Jeff Hardy versus Xavier Woods. Give me Jeff Hardy versus Xavier Woods of the New Day. Like at SummerSlam or at Battleground. Well, it's not Battleground. Whatever the pay-per-view after at Extreme Rules or something. Jeff Hardy versus Xavier Woods for the United States Championship later down the line. I would love to see that match because both of those two can go. And I would love to see that. So Jeff Hardy is winning this match. Most predictable match of the night, Seth Rollins versus The Miz, singles match for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, if they do say and on the pre-show, which they haven't announced the pre-show match, which I'm pretty sure will be the Cruiserweight Championship if they do make one, because the Cruiserweight title has not been added to this show, I could see, like, if they do come out on, on the pre-show, and, like, The Miz, if The Miz wins, he's not taking it to SmackDown, he'll be back on Monday Night Raw, like they did with, they tried to do with The Bar, and they did with Chris Jericho last year. But, of course, I'm going with Seth Rollins because Miz doesn't need it. Miz also, that's also another one. Miz could also face off against Jeff Hardy for the United States Championship. The US champ, Miz hasn't held the U.S. Championship in a good while, and that would be a hell of a feud right there. Heel Miz versus Jeff Hardy for the Intercontinental title, and maybe with Daniel Bryan after the Daniel Bryan stuff is finished. And if Daniel Bryan, which I don't know if he's going to, could win the, U, the WWE Championship back, Miz and him can have a feud over it too. AJ Styles with Shinsuke Nakamura, don't know the Q match for the WWE Championship match. Of course, this all goes back to AJ and Shinsuke Nakamura winning the Men's Royal Rumble at the January event. Not this past Friday at the Greatest Royal Rumble, but the Royal Rumble in the proper Royal Rumble in January. He went to WrestleMania and he faced AJ Styles in a un very underwhelming match. Turned heel by doing becoming the cheap shot artist known as Shinsuke Nakamura. After the match, beat him down a little bit. And then, of course, they had the rematch at the Greatest Royal Rumble, which ended in a double count-out. And, of course, AJ Styles beating the hell out of Shinsuke Nakamura and out of frustration. Then, of course, over the weekend, after, like on Saturday, I believe it was, last week, Shane McMahon, I think it was Shane McMahon, put out on Twitter that they will have a match at Backlash. And then this past Tuesday, Paige made it a no-disqualification match. Why Shane McMahon couldn't do that right away is beyond me. But this is Shinsuke Nakamura's final chance for now. And he lost two times to Jinder Mahal, both dirty. He both, of course, both with the help of the Singh brothers, and then of course he was out of the title picture until, like, out from like November, December, January, when he won the Royal Rumble, February, and of course March, he wasn't in the title picture because he was playing a background player for that for now, and then of course WrestleMania. This is his. This is he's already had two titles matches against AJ Styles. This is the third one. If he doesn't win the title here, he's back of the line. The only problem I have with Shinsuke Nakamura is what are they going to do with him after he is not... If he does not win this match on Sunday. This one is a very big toss-up because, like I said, if AJ Styles does not lose the title to Shinsuke Nakamura, AJ Styles, I think, should hold the title till he, he eclipses 300 in some days. If they, want a, if they want to beat CM Punk's WWE Championship reign record... Brock Lesnar's title is a totally different championship. Have AJ Styles hold the title till mid next year. Have AJ Styles hold the title till next year. It's a full-time guy holding the title, defending it every single month or almost every single month. That's the difference. CM Punk held that title for 400 and some days, defending the title every single month. Every single month. So having him go out there... AJ Styles and do the same thing that CM Punk did and eclipse CM Punk's record next year would be the way to go if you wanted to. But if it's not, if Shinsuke Nakamura wins the title, then of course we get a rematch and it's Money in the Bank or whatever pay per view they want to do. If, like I said, if Shinsuke Nakamura does not win this championship match tonight, this Sunday, he is not going to be in championship contendership anymore for until at least SummerSlam. And if anything, I can actually see Shinsuke Nakamura winning Money in the Bank. If Nakamura does not win the championship this year, he wins Money in the Bank. And he, with the, with the heel gimmick, because I think a heel Shinsuke Nakamura holding the Money in the Bank, champion, the Money in the Bank briefcase is, would actually be great for his character. Because he could still, with AJ Styles still winning, holding the championship, playing with AJ's mind. Being like, don't don't forget about me. I have this thing right here. I can hit you. I can low blow you after a match, and then 
you know, low blow you again, low blow you again, hit you with a Kinshasa, hand over my briefcase, and one, two, three, I'm the champion. So, I'm going to probably say Shinsuke Nakamura will not win this championship because of what I just stated. I think Shinsuke Nakamura is planning to win. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I could see him winning the Money in the Bank briefcase. If he's in that cha if he's in that match, which I hope he is, like Nakamura wins the Money in the Bank briefcase and he plays mind games with AJ Styles all year long, winning the title. I don't know if before WrestleMania or at WrestleMania, in some fa crime or fat like, like he wins the title, he wins the, the this, and they didn't they could do this too. The Men's Royal Rumble winner. Wins, wins the Royal Rumble and challenges whoever is the Universal Champion going into WrestleMania for the championship. While Nakamura, as the Money in the Bank briefcase holder, could be like, he's so full of himself. He's so arrogant. He thinks he's better than everybody else. Cashes in and says he will be the, he will be the number one contender going into WrestleMania. I get to choose when I want to be the one to get want my title shot. This briefcase says until next this coming year's Money in the Bank, I have a title shot, no matter if and or where. And he goes to WrestleMania as the number one can as the guy for the championship. And they could always put in a stipulation there and say it's like a ladder match. WWE Championship ladder match at WrestleMania. Thank you very much. So we have Styles over Nakamura because I think he's gonna win Money in the Bank. Seth Rollins over the Miz because of course he is. Jeff Hardy over Randy Orton because I think Jeff Hardy could use, have more miles out of being United States champion and do more feuds than Randy Orton. And quite honestly, at this time in his career, a lengthy U.S. title reign for Randy Orton is kind of below where he should be. Nia Jax over Alexa Bliss, Charlotte over Carmella, Roman Reigns over Samoa, I mean, I'm sorry, sorry, no, Samoa Joe over Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan over Big Cass, and Strowman and Lashley over Zayn and Owens, unless Bobby Lashley is turning heel to help Zayn and Owens beat down Braun Strowman. And then, of course, we can build to Braun Strowman versus Bobby Lashley at Money in the Bank. But that is my backlash preview and predictions. I know it's usually a longer, like, longer thing, but WWE is not going to care about building this show like they should. Why should I care to go into full detail on these feuds? Because most of these feuds are just thrown together at last minute. But that is going to be all. My name is The France. Find me on Twitter at The France. Find me on Twitch.tv slash The France 8 Hit that subscribe button. Comment down below what your preview and prediction, what your predictions are and who you think is going to walk out with championship gold, be, um, victories over, over heated rivals, and who's going to go to the next pay-per-view, which I believe is Money in the Bank, as the favorite going who, who out of, and this is my question to everybody. I would like to know this down below. In the comment section, let me know, out of this show, who do you think is going to go to Money in the Bank and become the Money in the Bank briefcase holder? Because I believe that's the next pay-per-view. I could be totally wrong, but I'm pretty sure out of this show, who do you think will be the Money in the Bank briefcase holder? I think if Nakamura doesn't win with his, with his character and being a heel, it would only seem right for him to hold that briefcase. And AJ Styles holding the WWE Championship and eventually losing the title to Nakamura by hook or by crook. That's going to be all. I'm getting out of here, and I will see you guys tomorrow. we got a nice little show of Unscripted. Still looking for a few more stories, but we do have news on Samoa Joe and, he, and his tie into the WWE Championship picture following Backlash, as well as Jeff Hardy making some championship championship history this when he won the United States Championship and much, much more. Until then, I'm getting out of here and I will see you guys here for Unscripted and then Backlash on Sunday.